The Labor of Love update brought a lot of changes to building in Terraria, and not all of them are from new items. Today, I'm going to be going over my favorite old item changes that this update has given us. Greetings friends, Chaos here. 1.4.4 brought a lot of small changes and balances. This didn't just apply to weapons, however. Several changes were made to affect builders directly, and honestly, I'm loving it. Today, I'm going to be talking about the small tweaks that this update made to impact how we build. When I say changes, I don't mean new additions. I mean things that already existed in the game prior to this update that have been slightly altered. So if you find this video helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I plan on getting a lot of videos out during the first two weeks of the update, so turning on the notification bell will help make sure that you are up to date with those videos. I'm aiming to reach 300,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you could help us reach that goal, I would greatly appreciate it. The first change that I want to talk about today is probably my personal favorite. Teleporters have been slightly modified. In the past, we've struggled to hide them, going to some pretty extreme lengths to make sure that they aren't visible, whether this is because they don't match the style of the build, or because we don't want players to know that there's a teleporter in that spot. The addition to echo coding will surely go a long way in helping to hide them, but one of the biggest headaches was trying to hide them in total darkness. Teleporters had a very bright blinking yellow light which would make them stand out like a sore thumb in dark builds. If you wanted an ambient adventure map set in total darkness with a teleporter to move you to a new room, well, say goodbye to that darkness. Not anymore, however. This update has removed the light generation from teleporters entirely. You can now completely hide one, even in darkness, simply by using some actuators and echo coding. Using the teleporter does still generate light and a sound effect, however. You can remove the sound by getting a resource pack that does that, but there's not much we can do about the light created from when you actually activate the teleporter. Even still, I'm very pleased that we could finally hide these awesome devices properly. Another huge change is something that a lot of you may already be aware of, but not everybody, because I've had some people asking me if I mod my inventory in the past few videos. That change is to the maximum stack size for most items. We've gone from being able to carry 999 items in a stack to 9,999, a massive increase. I don't really need to point out why this is great for builders, as we work with copious quantities of blocks, walls, and paints. This is a huge quality of life improvement. Take that, Minecraft players. 1.4.4 brought us the new Rebel Maker item. If you don't know what that is, I have a video linked in the description below that tells you all about it. That new tool brought a very unique ability with it you can right-click to change the state of the item. With the invention of that mechanic, Relogic has altered a few items from previous updates to also include this new right-click mechanic. The encumbering stone, which prevents you from picking up items dropped on the floor, can now be right-clicked to turn into an uncumbering stone, which allows you to pick the items up once again, meaning you don't actually have to open your inventory to toggle the stone on and off. They also added a right-click feature to the void bag, allowing it to open and close. Even better, the void bag has several big changes made to it. When a void bag is closed, it acts more like a money trough than anything, but you won't be able to pick up any additional items when your inventory is full, as you might expect. But the bag functions very differently now when you right-click to open it. You are still able to pick up additional items when your inventory is full, but beyond that, you can now craft with items in your void bag even if you don't summon the void just by having an open bag in your inventory. Even better, you can consume food and potions directly from the open void bag without having to summon the portal, and you have no need to keep any food or potions in your active inventory. 
You could even stash things like the Guide to Critter Companionship or the Press Raider in your open void bag and still benefit from their abilities for as long as the bag is open. This adds a lot of versatility to the void bag and it frees up a bunch of inventory space for you. Did you know that you can actually wear monoliths in 1.4.4? They used to only function by placing them on the floor and activating them. It would allow everybody in the area to see the new lighting and background effects, but if you walk too far away from them, the effect would go away. Now you can simply equip one instead. It will only affect your point of view, not the other players, but the monolith will be active for as long as you're wearing it, no matter where you go. And you can equip multiple monoliths at the same time to combine the background and lighting options as well. And they also work when worn in a vanity accessory slot, so you don't even need to take up the active slot to use them. Do you hate the time between fishing quests? Are you sick of blood moons and eclipses? Did you just use your enchanted sundial to get to the next day, only to be immediately greeted by another eclipse or another blood moon later that night? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then you are going to love the changes that Relogic made to the enchanted sundial. Don't get ahead of me, they didn't remove the cooldown timer on it. You will still have to wait seven in-game days between sundial uses. Kind of. You see, in this update, if your sundial is on cooldown and you get a blood moon or a solar eclipse, your sundial immediately resets that cooldown and you can use it right away. That means if you get a solar eclipse and you use the sundial to fast forward to the next day and you immediately get another solar eclipse, you could just use the sundial again. If you're not sure whether or not it's available to use, they have also added a new fiery glowing animation to it to indicate when it is and when it isn't available. If you're thinking of using that new reset feature on the sundial to rapidly get fishing quests done, however, don't get your hopes up too high. Blood moons and solar eclipses do indeed reset it, which will surely reduce the time between your fishing quests but this only happens if those events occur naturally. Using a bloody tear or a solar tablet will not cause a sundial to reset, so you won't be able to use those to directly fast track your fishing and quest resets. But even still, you get blood moons often enough that it will help to some degree. And that isn't even including a new item that has been added to the game, which will help even more but that's a topic for a different video, since it's a new addition. This is a bit of a minor change, but planter boxes have also seen some improvement. Many people enjoy using these as platforms for their boss arenas, as they are slightly easier to place than platforms are. But there's always a little flaw with them in that regard. You wouldn't have been able to hang things like heart lanterns from them, and you would need a solid block instead. That's been changed, as now you can hang any lantern, brazier, or even a banner from the planter box, allowing you to get those wonderful benefits in your boss arena without having a solid block impede your movement. Or, if you're just a boring builder like myself, you might enjoy the fact that you can also place hanging herbs on the underside of the planter box. All of these small decorations hanging below can be pretty handy for detailing builds further. Last, but certainly not least, this change has to do with ropes, platforms, and minecart tracks. Whenever you place a line of rope that runs through a row of platforms or minecart tracks, they used to not connect. Now they do. The minecart track or platform actually changes its appearance to add a connecting rope segment to make it look as if they are fully connected. You can even climb the rope fully up and down through the tracks or the platforms, and it doesn't interrupt a minecart riding along the rails either. Even better, this doesn't just apply to standard ropes, but rather every variant of them, including chains and streamers. As an added bonus, ropes, chains, and streamers interact with each other in a new way now as well. If you place them one on top of the other, they will connect to each other like this. This only applies vertically, so placing different types of ropes side by side will not force them to connect. And as a final change, 
In the past, only normal rope would connect to the blocks to the side of it, above it, or below it. Now, every rope, streamer, and chain will connect to any block next to them, allowing you to actually have them connected to the surrounding tiles, which I'm enjoying particularly when it comes to the chain. All in all, I am loving all of these small changes to 1.4.4. Let me know in the comments which of these changes you like the most. A huge thank you to my biggest supporters for the month. Matt Dragon, Nate Wiley, Hippic3, Duke Samron, and Nick Peasley. And be sure to check out my channel artist, Mythical Water, linked in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. Be back tomorrow with a brand new video. Until then, happy building.